Hello guys, hope all of you are doing great. This is Dr. RCB and you are viewing my channel Computer Science with Dr. RCB. This is part one of the video series where we are learning the fundamentals of Python programming language. The link of the playlist you will get in the description. Okay guys, then let's begin today's part. In this part, we're going to learn what is a variable, why do we need a variable in a program, and then how we can perform some operation on data using the concept of variable, and at the end, printing the output. Now, these concepts are very simple concepts, but they are, they are very fundamental concepts of any programming language, not only Python, but in all the programming languages, these concepts are there. So for that reason, I request you people to go through this entire video and understand these simple concepts. And once we understand these simple concepts, at the end of the video, we'll be writing a program to find the average of three numbers and display it on the screen. Now let's uh, talk about variable. To understand that, we, I'll show you this picture. This is a simplistic block diagram of a computer. The unit that performs or that executes the uh, executes the programs that you write is this CPU. It is the unit that actually carries out all the instructions that you give to a pro, uh, that you give to a computer. Now this CPU is connected with uh, you know some units like say memory unit. There are two types of memory units. One is this secondary memory and one is this primary memory. When you store a file or a movie or an image or you know, all these things, then these are actually stored in the secondary storage or secondary memory of your computer. Now, when you are executing a program, that time, that CPU, what is a program basically? A program is nothing but uh, you, are perform, you are giving the computer uh, some instructions to perform some operations on some data, right? So it means the computer has to perform some operation on some data. Now, whenever the computer has to perform some operation on some data, then the important thing is then the data must have to be stored in the RAM of the computer. If the data is there in the secondary storage, then the CPU will not be able to perform any operation on that data. Say for example, let me give you an example. Say for example, you are using a image editing app, maybe from your mobile phone or from your computer. Okay. So in that case, whenever you see your image, actually you want, you first store the image in the secondary storage of the computer. That is your hard disk of the computer, right? But whenever you start editing the image, the first thing that you have to do is you have to first load the image in the app, right? So that thing, when you do that, actually what happens is that from the secondary storage, from your hard disk, the image is actually loaded into the RAM of your computer. And then only your app can actually, this app, the, all the instruction, app is nothing but it is ultimately a program. So when the CPU is executing, uh, when you are actually running the app, basically the CPU is executing the program which is written in the app. Okay, so when is when the app is editing the image, basically the, the CPU is performing some operation uh, on the image which is there in the RAM. So that's why at the end, once you perform the editing part, at the end you always have to save the image. Saving the image image means what? What? It means whatever the editing you did, whatever the operations your CPU has performed on that image, at the end. That new image, which is there in the RAM, you want to store permanently. And for that reason, you, as soon as you click on save, that image goes to your hard drive and it, it, it remains there until and unless you delete it by yourself. You got the point? So the moral of the story is that whenever a program wants to do any operation on some data, then that data must be there in the RAM of the computer then only the CPU or the program can perform some operation on that data. Understood? Okay then. And I, uh, um, just to make the picture complete, I uh, connected the CPU with this keyboard and the output screen. Keyboard is one example of the input unit and output screen is one example of the output unit. Okay guys? Okay then. Now since people now know that whenever a program wants to perform some operation on data, then that data must be there in the RAM. The next question is, how do we do that? I mean, how do we load the data in the RAM, right? And that's where the concept of variable comes. 
Now let's see how we can load data in the RAM of a computer. Now here, when I say data, like to, to make it very simple, I'll be using uh, some numbers as an example of data. Say for example, you are writing a program to add two numbers. In that case, those two numbers will be the data for the program. Okay, and let's see how we can actually store those numbers in the RAM of the computer. Okay, now let me say we want to store two numbers in the RAM. Okay, that's our goal right now. Okay, so for that, what you will do is you will write something like A is equal to, say the first number is 23, and then you will write B is equal to, say the second number is 54. Now here, uh, we want our data is these two numbers, like uh, 23 is one piece of data, and this other number 54 is another piece of data. Now in a program, whenever you write something like A is equal to 23 or B is equal to you know, some number, say 54, it means what you are instructing the computer to do is store this number 23 in the RAM of the computer and store this number 50, 54 in the RAM of the computer. Okay, and then why is A equal to important? Now this equal to is important because that that is the symbol that actually says the uh, uh, says the computer okay store the right hand side number or into the RAM. But why this A is important? This A is actually a variable. Now let's see what actually happens when you write A is equal to twenty three in a program. For that again, let me bring you here. So when you write a is equal to 23, what instruction actually you are giving to the computer? You are asking the computer to store this number 23 in the RAM of the computer. Okay, now let's see what I mean by that. Like whenever you are giving this instruction to the computer, this instruction will be executed by the CPU. And when the CPU executes this instruction, what it will do is, what is the meaning of this instruction is, Okay, you are asking the computer to do something like this. Okay, create a container in the RAM, that is allocate some space in the RAM and store there the number 23. Okay, that is, it's a container. You can think it of like, you know, allocating some space, you can think it of like creating a container or creating a box. See here, in our real life, whenever we want to store something, then we need a container. Say for example, you want to store some sugar, then what you need, you need a container. You want to store some milk, then what you need, you need a container. No matter what you want to store, more or less, you need a container, the same way. So if you want to store this number 23 in the RAM, basically you need a container, virtually, okay? So that's what you are asking the computer to do when you write A equal to 23. So when you write A equal to 23, what you are asking the computer to do is, okay, store this number 23. That is create a container, first create a container, and then store the number 23 in that container. Then why is this A, I mean, what is this A then? Okay, what is this A is, okay, create the container, store the number 23 there, and give a name to the container, give a name to the container. Let's call this container, say for example, A. That is the that is the importance of writing this A here. Okay. Now you might be thinking, why A? Why not something else? Yes, you can give any name to the container you want. It means instead of writing here this A equal to 23, you can easily write there. You can easily write there, say for example, A B C equal to 23. Not a problem. Or you can write there A, you know, like say X Y Z equal to 23. Or you can write say for example, RAM is equal to 23 anything you can give this name you can you can you, uh, you can uh, you know keep any name more or less okay there are some rules certainly but right now i'm not going in that direction most uh, you know in any i mean mostly you can keep any name to these uh, to these variables okay but certainly there are some rules again say for example you cannot keep a name say as uh, 43 Okay, that is you are creating a here you might be thinking, okay, you are you you are asking the computer to create a container, store there 23, and call that container 23. That is not possible. Okay. It, it will create some confusion for the CPU, as you can see from here. But even if it is not clear, don't worry. But for the time being, what I want to say is that yes, more or less everything you can keep as a, a as the name of the container. Any like 
yeah any name like say abc xyz pqr you know any any that kind of name you can keep okay the rules of keeping the names i'll tell you once you become familiar with some of the basic concepts of programming okay so once it is done then automatically you learn it but then also when i save the rules they will make perfect sense to you okay okay then so for the time being what you need to understand is that okay you can keep the name anything it means abc is okay or capital abc is also okay or capital a b lowercase c capital is okay you know this type of any name you can keep to a uh, you can give to a container okay okay then now what i said is again let's see when you write an instruction like let's keep this name as a you know it's simple right i just have to write one single letter Okay, so whenever you write like A equal to 23, what you are doing or what you are instructing the computer to do is, okay, create a container, give it a name A and store there this number 23. That's all. Now, this name that you give to this container, it is called a variable. So what is a variable basically? A variable is nothing but it is the name of a container in the RAM where you store some data. That's a variable. Now, see, guys, you don't have to remember the definition of a variable. You don't have to remember the need of a variable in a program. This thing, you will automatically, you know, you will be able to, you know, answer these questions once you, uh, once you, you know, write a few programs. Automatically, you will understand, okay? Here, I'm explaining you the concepts. That's why I'm telling you these things. But again, once you write a few programs, these things will become, like, very easy for you. It's just like, you know, like riding a cycle. When you first learn riding a cycle, it seems like it is the most difficult task in the world. But the thing is, once you know how to ride a cycle, then you know it. I mean, you know, like uh, you learned how to ride a cycle and then say, for example, for five years, you didn't ride a cycle. You never actually saw a cycle. And after five years, again, if you see the cycle, you, you immediately know how to ride that cycle. You again don't have to start from the beginning. Okay, the same way here also, like these concepts, no? Once you know them, you know them. I mean, uh, that's the thing, okay? Okay then. So, what is a variable? Let me again tell you, what is a variable? A variable is nothing but, it is the, it is a con it is the name of a container that where you store some data in the RAM, okay? It is the name of a container where you store some data in the RAM, okay? Got it? Okay, then. So whenever you see now instructions like A equal to 23 or B equal to say 45, what you are asking the computer to do is you are actually, say for example, A equal to 23, this is done. B equal to 45, next instruction. So in that case, again, what the container, uh, what the computer will do is it will create a container. It will give a name to the container, say B, and it will store there this number 45. Now, when we write a equal to 23, technically we say we are creating, we are declaring a variable and we are storing 23 in that variable. When we write b equal to 45, technically we say, okay, we are declaring a variable b and then we are storing this number 45 in it. So a variable, as I, again, I'm telling you, a variable is nothing but it is just a name given to a container, which is there in the RAM and where you store some data. That's all. Now, you might be thinking, then what is the importance of giving names to this container? I mean, why not only store the data and that's all? It is important, right? I mean, why it is important? Okay, let me give you the analogy of this sugar, okay? Now, say, for example, you have a robot that can make tea. But only thing is that it actually uh, you know, doesn't know which one is sugar, which one is uh, milk and all these things okay but it know how to like once you tell it which one is sugar which one is milk which one is this uh, you know tea uh, that, then out of using this ingredient it knows how to make tea okay so for that reason to make it understand what you do is okay in the container of of the sugar you label it like okay sugar in the container of the milk you label it like okay this is milk in the container of the tea you write okay this is the tea now, when you give instruction to the robot, then you just say it in terms of the names of those, in terms of the names of those containers. Okay, then you, you say the robot something like this. Okay, you go to the kitchen and then you get the container whose name is uh, sugar. Instead of saying this long sentence, you also can say it like this. Okay, you go to the container, you know, get the sugar, get the milk, get the tea. 
Now, how the uh, robot is going to understand which one is sugar, which one is uh, tea, which one is milk? It is going to understand it by just by looking at the level of these containers. Okay, whenever I say, uh, okay, get the sugar, it means it will look at the containers. Okay, is there a container where the level is like, you know, uh, sugar? So, we, okay, this is the container. Okay, it means this is sugar. So, you take the sugar. Okay, this is the container of milk. This is the container of tea, like that. Got it? So that is the importance of assigning a level to a container. It means what? We can actually refer to those memory locations or to uh, we can actually refer to those containers just by writing their name. Got it? Clear? Okay, and that is why we need a variable. Now see here, as soon as you like create a container, you store 23 in that container and later on, you can do some operations like this. Say for example, um, uh, A is equal to whatever it is the value of A add with this 34, add 34, another 34 with the value of the, uh, with the you know, uh, old value of the container and store the new value in the same container. Okay, let me, let me show you this. Uh, like what will happen let me tell you what will happen when you write something like this a is equal to a plus 34 so initially the program suppose this is your entire program okay when you write this program initially you have written a equal to 23 remember one thing guys whenever you are executing a program the program will always be executed from top to bottom one instruction at a time okay so when you when the cpu executes this program so what it will do it will first go to this instruction a equal to 23 for that, it will create a container A and then it will store this 23 there. B equal to 45. Create a container B and store there 45. Okay. Or technically, if you want to say, replace this word container by variable. Create a variable A and store there 23. Create a variable B, store there 45. And then when you write A equal to A plus 34, what you are asking the computer is, okay, this A, first thing is on the right hand side. Okay. Like, you know a a plus 34 the computer will first look at this a plus 34 so when you write here a it means the computer will understand okay this is actually the name of a container so it will go to the ram and it will look for okay is there a container whose name is a yes if it is there then it will take the value of that container so if it is 23 it will take that 23 out so 23 now will be added with 34 23 plus 34 what is 23 plus 34 let me add it 23 plus 34 that is uh, 57 so that 57 is will be again the computer will now store that 57 as the value of the container a it means what it will do is it will erase whatever it is there in this container a and then it will store this new value 57 in this container Got this point and see that is the importance of a variable why because you see like using this name we are actually referring to the container in the program and we can refer to the container in different situations and not only like this okay uh, say for example you want to show now the value of the container a or value of the variable a on the screen okay so in that case what you can do is you can write like something like print a yeah so when you do that, okay, just a second. Print A. When you do that, what you are actually asking the computer to do is okay, first go to the container A, get the value of the container, and then display it on the screen. So as soon as the computer executes this instruction, it will first okay go to A, okay, A in A57 is there 57. So it will take that 57 and it will display it on the screen. So as a result, you will see 57 on your screen as an output got the point so now that is the importance of a variable so in this party people have actually learned what is a variable and why we need a variable in in uh, in a program okay okay then is there anything else that i said i'll be telling you yes how to perform simple operations on data i already showed you actually one example so like how you can add but then also uh, let's um, let's first see some examples of these variables and you know and then we'll get to that point so for example now you now you know the meaning of writing a equal to 23 b equal to 54 right it means what you're doing basically is that you're creating a container in the ram and you're calling that container you're giving a name uh, to that container uh, as a and then you're storing 23 in that container Similarly, here what you're doing is you're creating a container in the RAM, you're calling, you're, you're giving a label to the container as B, and then you're storing 54 in that container. Done. 
Now let's say you want to see now the values of those containers. Say I want to see what is there in A, I want to see what is there in B. So you'll be writing it like this, print A, print B. It means you are, you are asking the computer to print the content of the container A on the screen. You're asking the computer to print the content of the container B on the screen. So you have to click on this play button and then, as I said, no first time if you execute, it will take some time. Yes, now the output is 23 and 54. This is the output, okay? Print A, whatever it is there in A, it is printed. Whatever it is there B, it is printed, 54, clear? Okay, now let me show you some simple operations. As I said, no, I will be also learning to perform some simple operations on data. Okay, let's see. So for example, after printing the values of A and B, what I do is now I write something like this. I create another container C and in that container, what I want to store is, in that container, I want to store the sum of the values of A and B. That is, what we are instructing the computer is, okay, first you go to the container A, get the value of the container, whatever it is, okay, you get it, get the value. And then again, you go to the container B, get the value of the container, no matter what it is, you get it. Then add them up, okay, now see here, as soon as I keep my, my mouse cursor here, you can see, okay, it's just showing you the result, but anyhow, uh, it is going to the container A, it is going to the container B, and it will take the values of those containers, it will add them up, and then the resultant value will be stored back in this variable C. Okay? A, it will go to the container, say 23, and B, it will go to the container, it will get the value 54. 23 plus 54. So it is uh, 7 and 7, 77. So what value will be stored by the computer in the container C? 77. Okay, let's check it out. Let's ask the computer, okay, after computing the value of the variable C, you also print the value of the variable C on the screen, okay? Let's see whether it does the job or not. Yes, now you can see the 77 is the output of the program. Now see guys, actually this is a program that takes two number and finds the sum of those two numbers, isn't it? You people have already learned how to write a program to add two numbers and display the sum on the screen. Quite simple and straightforward, isn't it? Yes, now I see here, now any two numbers, okay, you can write here any two numbers, say for example, A equal to 10, B is equal to 0, 10 plus 0 is 0, so output should be 0, uh, I mean, yes, 10, 10 is the A, 0 is B, and then 10 plus 0 is 10, you are storing in C, so 10 is the output, say for example, you, are store, you store here a negative number minus 12, okay, so what is 10 plus minus 12, 10 plus minus 12 is, uh, minus 2. So that minus 2 will come as the value of the variable C. Clear. So if people have already learned like how to write a program to uh, add two numbers. Now if I ask you write a program to add, to multiply two numbers, it is now intuitively you know how to do that, right? The only thing is that you just have to change this plus symbol to this multiplication symbol. This star in in any programming language actually this star represents this multiplication operation okay so if you now run this program instead of showing you the addition result it will show you the multiplication result so 10 into minus 1 2 is equal to minus 120 that's the output not only this see here if people have seen like plus minus addition subtraction these are simple operations okay you can uh, you don't need any explanation actually. If you write here a minus b, you'll be seeing okay, 10 minus minus 12. What is 10 minus minus 12? It is basically 10 plus 12, so 22. So 22 will be the output here. Okay, so if you write here a divided by b, divided operation, division is actually represented by these forward slash. Okay, so let's see what is a divided by b. And you know, let me keep here a simple number so that we can easily verify the output. Say, so for example, 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2, so you should be able to see here a 2. It is saying you have 2.0, okay, because uh, the result of division, it, it, it shows you in terms of fraction. Here it is 2.0, okay, like I can write here, say for example, 3. 10 divided by 3 is actually 3.3333 like that, right? So what is 10 divided by 7? 10 divided by 7 is whatever, 1.428 or something like this. Got it? So if people have learned what is a variable. A variable is nothing but it is the name that you give to a container in the RAM where you store some data. Why do we need a variable in a program? So that from a program, we can refer to that container 
uh, and we can perform some operation on the value which is there inside this container. How to perform some simple operation on data? Straightforward, like this, right? And then printing the output, already you have seen it, right? Now it's time to actually write a program fi to find the average of three numbers. Since you know this, right? I mean, people know it, how to do it. But then also, let me write it format. Okay, you want to write a program to find the average of three numbers. Then how should you start writing the program, okay? So for that, average of three numbers, it means you need three, three data, right? I mean, three pieces of data you need. So for that, you create three containers in the RAM. Say, for example, A is equal to some number, three. B is equal to some other number, 34. C is equal to some other number, say, for example, 76. And you want to compute the average of these numbers. So to compute average, the manual process is what? First, you have to find the sum of all those three numbers, right? So you compute the sum. Say, let's create another container, sum, and you store there the sum. Like, how do you compute the sum of some numbers? Say, you write it like, okay, sum is equal to, get the value of the container A, add it with the value of the container B, then add it with the value of the container C. All right. Now you are actually asking the computer to go to the RAM, get the value of the container A, B, and C, and add them up. Whatever it is, the sum you want, you are asking the computer to again store this sum in the in in the container whose name is sum. Done. And just to verify, you can print actually print the sum on the screen. Okay. And now our goal is not to print the sum. Our goal is to print the average. So for that, again, you declare a variable. Say, so for example, A, B, E, R, A, G, E, average is equal to sum divided by three because, you know, you, that sum is the sum of three numbers. So obviously, when you compute the average, you have to divide it by three. And then you are ready to print the result on the screen. Print average. Oh, sorry. Print A, V, R, A. Sorry, A, V, E, R, A, Z. I'm sorry. A V E R A G E. Okay, average. Done. And then you print and your program is done. Okay. Now, uh, here you might be thinking is it really important to call this container sum or give, in, uh, give this variable name as sum? No, you can call it x. No problem. But only thing is that uh, wherever you are writing sum, now obviously you know that you have to write here x, you have to write here x. Is it really important to call this variable average? No, you can call it y. You'll get exactly the same output. Same output, right? So these variable names, as I said, now you can keep more or less anything as the name of the variable. Okay, done then. So that much only in this part of the video, but then also before actually finishing the video, let me, uh, let me ask you some questions just to check your understanding, okay? So if you can answer those questions, then it means that you people have understood the concept. Okay, let me let me show you some program here. Okay, you can pause the video. Once I ask you the question, you can pause the video and then uh, you know you can check your understanding and then again resume the video and see whether whatever you thought was right or wrong or whatever you understood is right or wrong. Okay, okay. Then let me write a program in this way. A is equal to say for example twenty three, and then B is equal to say, for example, again, say some number 12. And then here I'm writing print A, print B. So if I execute this program, what do you think will be the output? Yes, it is right. You don't have to pause 23 and 12. There is no doubt in there. Okay. But now the next part. Now suppose again I write A is equal to 45. And then I write print. Okay. Now the question is, if I execute this program, what will be the output of the program? Is it going to be 23? Is it going to be 45? Or is it going to be 23 plus 45? Okay, so just make a guess. I mean, just uh, don't make a guess. Just, uh, you know, get your answer. And then, I mean, pause the video, get the answer. And then again, resume the video to check the answer. So the answer is, you see, here I'm printing the value of A. This, this, this 23 is coming from print A. Now see here, as I said, no, when you execute a program, the program always executes from top to bottom one line at a time. So what you're doing is you are asking the computer, create a container and store 23 there. Okay, done. 
create a container, store 12 there, that is also done, and then print A. At this point, when the computer is printing the value of the container A, what it will see? Obviously, for the computer, this part is unknown. I mean, that is going to happen in the future. When it is executing this instruction, these instructions are going to happen. These instructions are going to be executed by the computer in the future. So right now, when the computer goes and sees whatever it is the value of the container A, it will see 23. As a result, it prints 23 there, okay? Then print B, certainly it's uh, 12 right now, so it will print 12 on the screen. And then A equal to 45. Now here, uh, there might be some doubts, okay? When you write A equal to 45, it is different from writing A is equal to A plus 45. When you write A equal to A plus 45, it means you want the computer to add 45 with the content or with the previous content of the variable a okay you want you are you are explicitly saying the computer okay add 45 this class is saying okay add add 45 with the previous content or with the you know the, the current content of the variable a but when you sim when you write something like uh, a equal to 45 here you're not asking the computer to add 45 with the current content of the you know variable a what you're doing is you're instructing the computer is okay store 45 as the value of the container a it means whatever previously it was there in the container a that will be erased and this new value will occupy that container Clear? So as a result, when you now print, at this point, if you print the value of the variable A, what the, because see here, this particular instruction is going to change the value of the container from whatever it was previously there to 45. Then after executing this instruction only, it will come here, right? Uh, and then when the computer tries to print the value of the variable A, what it will see in the container A, it will see 45. So as a result, it will show you 45 on the screen. Okay then, that much only in this part of the video. Hope you people have understood the concept and uh, if you have any doubts or queries, then you people can let me know it in the comment section. And also, if you like the video, then please press the like button there and also subscribe the channel. Okay guys then, that, that much only in this part of the video. See you guys with some new content in the next part. Till then, have a nice day.